Heavenly Father, thank you for today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you. For keeping us. For blessing us. Yes. For loving us. For being patient with us. We thank you most of all for the sacrifice of your Son, Jesus, our Savior, our Lord, our Teacher, the one who is and was and will always be, the one who has kept us in spite of us, the one who has forgiven us and blessed us. Yes. So, Lord, through Jesus, we pray today that you move on our behalf, that you illuminate to us truths, Yes. Give to us deeper understanding. Thank you, Lord. Open our hearts and our minds. Glory. Forgiving us of sin and helping us forgive those who have sinned against us. Yes. Cleansing us from unrighteousness and preparing us to give and to receive. Let yes. us yes. give ourselves to you and let us receive your message, whether yes. it's directly from the scriptures that are read, whether yes. it's through the woman of God and the message that she preaches, whether it's through the music we heard before, or music we'll hear after, whether it's through fellowship. Whatever the case may be, Father, yes, may you quicken yes, to us yes. your revelations, your Amen. understanding, and may you be glorified in it. May you be glorified in our changed hearts and our open minds. May you be glorified in the words that we use, the things that we do, the things that we won't do, Father. Yes, thank you. May you, you be Lord. glorified at all times. Yes, Lord, thank you. And Jesus. in all things, Father, may you glory, glory, be glory, lifted up glory. Yes, and yes, exalted, yes, Father. Yes, on high, God, on high. Again, we thank you. We yes. praise you. And we love you. And we say this all in Jesus' name. Hey, amen. amen, Lord God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Well, you know, we can't, you know, a lot of people are ignoring that big elephant in the room. And, of course, that was the election. But I say to you, no matter who you voted for, we have to know that uh, we need to pray for whoever God has allowed, no matter who that may be, allowed to be in office Everybody needs prayer. We cannot think that we're all that or that any one of God's creations does not deserve prayer. Mm -hmm. Whether you agree with someone, uh, whether you acknowledge uh, their views, they still need prayer. We don't have to agree, but we do need prayer to pray. God didn't say agree without ceasing. He said pray without ceasing. Amen. I was listening before we had started to that song together by For King and Country and with Kirk Franklin and Tori and it was just such a blessing and, and it's one of my favorite songs lately because it talks about us together and it doesn't just talk about us as Christians together, but it could be talking about together as a family. It could be together our marriage, together uh, uh, as uh, on the job, together as a nation, together as the world, but together we will rise together. If we fall, we end up falling together because we're connected to one another and we have to understand that we in the body of Christ have to see that there's been some divisions that have been happening. And the enemy, and I'm just going to be real, and people can hate on me, but the enemy has kept a lot of the body of Christ so focused on politics and distracted away from Jesus. And people go, well, no, that's not true, because we were focused on politics because of this person or that person, their views and their standpoints, but that should not stop you from looking at God's viewpoint, no matter who is elected into office. Because then what happens is we start to feel ourselves a little bit and we get a little whirly and then we call in each other names and we're attacking each other, but we're in the same body of Christ, supposedly. You know, we cannot expect to show the real fruit of Christ, but also show worldliness too. Because then people, they get confused. Just because an election is going on or just because these other things are happening doesn't stop us from supposedly being who God called us to be. Amen. I, I can't speak for who that person is or who's running. I ain't got nothing to do with that. God is holding me accountable for my actions, my interactions, what I say and what I don't say. I may not agree with you, but I'm not going to attack you. We can reason together. And if we can't come to something like Paul said, then we can agree to disagree. But we need to still love on each other. That's why God put this in my spirit. And we said before the election, and it's about God's people, and it's about this nation. Three words. Three words. 
reborn, reform, transform. Reborn, reform, and transform. Well, what am I talking about? I always tell you, God always says, okay, Nicole, go to the definition. I want you to not just assume you know what the word is, but I want you to break it down. I want you to see what the definitions are. The word reborn, what does that mean? Reborn means this. Reborn means to be brought back to life. It means a complete spiritual change. I'll say it again. It means to be brought back to life. It means a complete spiritual change. Well, what about reform? What does reform mean? We said reborn was being brought back to life. We said reborn was a complete spiritual change. But what does reform mean? Reform means to make a change in order to improve something. Reform means to make a change in order to improve something or to become better. So reborn means bring back to life a complete spiritual change. It didn't say partial, it said complete. Reform means to make a change in order to improve something or to become better. And what about transform? Transform means to make a thorough, a thorough, dramatic change in the form of an appearance, in the form of a character, it means to improve. Notice it says a dramatic change. I'm not talking about, oh, I just, you know, all of a sudden curled my bangs versus just wearing them like with a little swoop. It's a difference if I had hair that was to my ankles versus now I have a pixie cut. That's a dramatic change. The opposite of transform would be what? To be stagnant, fixed. Same, unchanged. Let's go to the scripture. Let's go to Romans 12, 2. Praise the Lord. Let's go to Romans 12, 2. We're in the New Testament. Praise the Lord. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. It says, Do not copy the behavior and the customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. So I don't want God to say, look, I know you're in the world, but remember you're not of it. I know you're in the world and people may be tripping. I know you're in the world and, and, and people are, are doing this and saying this and this is the latest this and that's the latest that. But I remind you, I don't want you to copy the customs. I don't want you to copy the behavior of this world. I'm not saying that you can't, you know, have a godly attitude and be like, hold on, wait a minute, and, and have a righteous anger. I, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that you can't correct somebody and have a little flavor to it and let them know, hey, wait a minute, I belong to Jesus. I'm not saying that. I'm saying don't copy, don't imitate. Don't emulate the, the, the customs and the ways of this world. I called you to emulate and to follow Christ. But let God transform you. What does transform you mean? To make that thorough, dramatic, drastic change in the form, in the appearance, in your character. To improve you, to lift you up, to build you up. But changing, what does he say? He didn't say changing how you dress. He didn't say changing uh, uh, which, what, 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 what you listen to. Uh, he, 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 didn't say, he didn't say that. He said changing the way you think because that take care of all of it. Because see, if he changed the way I think, then because he's changed the way I think, there's certain things that will fall away that I won't want to listen to. I won't want to see. I don't want to do. Then it says then, after that, transformation after you have begun that change after it says then you will know God's will for you which is good pleasing and perfect let's go to the book of 2nd Corinthians 2nd Corinthians 5 17 2nd Corinthians 5 17 and we'll be coming back to these scriptures but 2nd Corinthians 5 17 2nd Corinthians 5 17 it says this means that anyone who belongs to Christ 
has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. And if you move on in verse 20 and 21, it basically states that we are Christ's ambassadors. We are Christ's representatives. In verse 21, it talks about Christ's sacrifice was made so that we could be in back, back in right relationship, reconnected with the Father and free from that sin. Free from that sinness and that flesh. Working on doing right and not wrong. Working on being righteous and holy. Reborn. Reborn. In the beginning, we said reborn means bringing back to life a complete spiritual change. When we talk about people in, in the body of Christ or coming to Christ, when we say reborn, we talk about being born again. We talk about a complete spiritual change. Saved. Belonging to the royal family, not... not People over in Britain and France and all that. No, we talk about a godly, divine family. No longer under that curse of eternal condemnation and damnation. But in order to be reborn, we first have to admit something. We first have to recognize something. And that's that need to change. That's that need that, you know what, something isn't right. I keep grasping at things and filling my life with things that just aren't filling it. It, it, it seemed like it may be for a second, but it just, it just doesn't complete me. It's like, oh, I ate all this t food, but I'm still hungry. For a second I wasn't hungry, but now I'm hungry again. And I just ate 30 minutes ago, 40 minutes ago. I'm not full. That need. They need to say, they need to admit, I'm not perfect. I don't have it all together. I, I'm not, I've, been, I've been going around in circles and it's like insanity and I keep at the same spot again and, and something needs to change. I, I'm recognizing as I'm getting older, whether I'm 20, 30, 40, 15, 100, I'm recognizing that I need more. And I'm starting to see the world can give me that more that I really need. I'm trying to fill it with stuff. I'm trying to fill it with people. And, and it's not quite hitting it. It's not quite making it. I'm coming to see and I'm listening. I keep hearing people talk about being full and being in field when they're talking about Jesus. And I'm seeing now that, hmm, maybe this is the path that I need to be on. Maybe this is the righteous path that they're talking about. God's lighted path of right living. In 1 John 4.15 in 1 John 4, 15, it says, Whoever confesses and acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Whoever confesses. See, I'm not just confessing it with my mouth. I'm confessing with my mouth that I believe in my heart. I'm admitting from my heart what my lips are coming out to say. Because see, in my heart, I know I'm wrong. In my heart, I know I feel unclean. I feel like something ain't right. So I confess it because now I'm seen for the first time like Saul to Paul, the scales are falling all out of my eyes. Even Paul, at one point when he was Saul, he was like, wait a minute, I thought what I was doing was right. I thought what I was learning about God was right. But, but. All that stuff I, I consider dung. It, it, it's not even important. I was wrong. I needed that 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 reborn. I needed that uh, uh, reform. I needed to be transformed. Cause I was wrong. You can think you're doing the right thing and have all the greatest of intentions, but be wrong. 
Now, as it says in 1 John 4, 15, I need to confess, you know what, God? I stink spiritually. My attitude stinks. The things that I used to do. I, I did some nice things and good things, but I'm, I'm coming to see it's not enough. It's more to it than giving somebody a dollar. It's more to it than saying something nice. It's more to it than that. It's my heart. I have the desire and want to, to do right all the time. Not just when it benefits me or to make myself feel better or because I think it's a nice thing to do, the right thing to do. But I have to come to you in a spirit of humility, submitting to you that, first of all, you God. I recognize that you are the higher power everybody keeps talking about when they say, oh, a higher power. I realize the higher power is you. You are creator. You are Lord. You are God. And I'm confessing that Jesus is your son. Your only son, the begotten son of you, that you sent here for me. When he died on the cross over 2,000 years ago, it was for me today. For that, that experience where I opened my eyes and I was like, wow, I really can see. I've never seen so clear in my life before. Where I need to go and what I need to do. It's like looking in the mirror for the first time and going, wow, that's that's." What I need to change. That was what was wrong. I had some stuff here. My glasses. I, I didn't even know I had that. I can get it right now. Because now I have been forced to. Now I admit. Now I, I look in the mirror. And I see. That change is needed. And I'm acknowledging Jesus. And I'm recognizing Father. I have to make the first step. In this change, because see, you've already you've already done what you 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 were supposed to do, but now you you're relying on okay, what are you going to do? So I'm making that step, and I'm moving forward, and saying, okay, God, change me, Amen. change me. I don't want to curse like that. I don't want to speak like that. I don't want to dress like that. I don't want to listen like that. I don't want to feel like that. I don't want to carry that. I don't want to be unforgiving. I don't want to be bitter. I don't want to continue to think about this hurt. I don't want to think about my past. I, I, I just, I, I want, I need change because everything I've been doing just, it just hasn't been working. When we do this in our heart and when we see that need for real, real change, we end up crying out to God snotting, whatever. However, letting God know, Abba, Father, God, I receive you. Not just Lord of my life, but Savior of my life, because you saved me from myself. Acknowledge you as King, Father, I'm standing in reverence and awe of your power and respecting who you are. So I can be different, better, grow, mature, Make a change, not in my life just for me, but for everybody in my life. So I can help others see, brother, sister, let me show you how God changed me. Let me share with you my experience. Let me give you my testimony. And people will bear witness to that painful moments and that hurt and that pain that was transformed into something beautiful. Amen? Amen. In order to start that transformation, we must be reborn, born again, born again. That's that part where we confess. That's that part of that spiritual rebirth, that newness and that regeneration. That spiritual birth, that physical, not physical one. And in that part of being reborn, that transformation, a lot of people go, oh, I'm a born again Christian. Oh, okay, I, I believe in Jesus and then that's it. No, there, there's a process. Just like sometimes people who have been on drugs for a long time, it's, you just can't quit cold turkey. You go through some, some uh, withdrawal symptoms. Sometimes in the body of Christ, even people who've been saved for 10, 15 years, sometimes as we're transforming, because we're always constantly growing, sometimes we, we get a little shaky and and we, we get a little pull back in. Our flesh tries to remind us of who we used to be. But in this rebirth process, in this transformation process, 
And even in the process as we're continuously transforming in the Lord, we have to be honest with ourselves. Just like at the start in the beginning, Psalms 51, where, where David was like, look, search me, God. Is there anything impure in me? Anything that ain't, that ain't right in me? Reveal it to me so I can get it together. And God will do that for you. God will do that in you, but you have to be a willing participant. Now, God is God. He can drag you down to the ground if you want. But he doesn't want to do that. He wants you to see the change yourself. Come to him yourself. Now, there are times where you, you will have that belly of a whale situation, and then you're sitting there, and you're like, well, Lord, I, okay, I can't run no more. Where am I going? Like, Elijah, why, we, 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 Elijah, what you doing? But I don't want to have to have God, quote, unquote, chase me. I want to pursue God. I want to acknowledge the sin nature, my, my issues, my problems, just like I did in the beginning, all throughout my relationship with God. Introspecting, being real and honest with myself. Mm -hmm. Because as we desire to be a child of God, as we desire to continue to be a child of God, to stay in God's good graces, we must continue to check our heart. Continue to check ourselves within. Wait a minute. I, I, I went too long without checking myself and some, some seed was planted of, of bitterness or something is going on. Lord, help me. What, what is this? Because I don't want it to be watered and take root and grow that bitterness, that unforgiveness or the, whatever it is. I need to take care of it now before that little sprout becomes a tree and it's hard to move. The Lord wants us not only in introspecting, but recognizing and agree that you can only do it. You can only make it. You can only get better. You can only continue to transform. Not on your own. Not through some mantra. Not through some meditation. Not with no beads. No. With God. With Jesus. With Jesus, real change comes. In Jesus, real change come. He is the only way. Make no mistake. People go, oh, there's many paths. You can be many paths to a lot of different places, but there's only one path to heaven. There's only one path to God, and that's Jesus Christ. In short, what am I saying for that and that transformation? Having full faith in the Father. Having full faith, accepting Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, let's be honest, sometimes that faith is going to be wavering and it's going to be a little shaky. But that's why we ask, oh, Father, I believe, but Lord, help my unbelief. Father, I'm believing in this, I'm believing in that, but Lord, I'm a little rocky here. Help me, Holy Spirit. And he recognizes that you're human. He recognizes in that state of trying to be transformed, and that state of continuing to transform and continue to grow, that metamorphosis, that changing, that cocoon process. He understands your need and your heart of wanting to be more like Jesus. He understands those things that are pulling at you and those things that are around you. He understands that you're continuing to desire him, but he also understands that we need to understand we cannot use these things as excuses. God reminds us, just like in Romans 12 too, he reminds us that we've been set apart we have been set apart from the world. We have been dedicated to God through Christ. Our, heart, our, our, our hearts and our voices vow and make a point to please God. Our actions make a point to please God. Our deeds make a point to please God. Not man. See, the reality is that people are going to be mad with you. They ain't going to agree with you. They're going to be upset with you. Well, why did you say that? Why did you vote that? Where you go here? Why did you do Because I know the relationship I have with my father, and this is what I was led to do. I don't have a relationship with Jesus for you. I have a relationship with Jesus for me. What may God may lead you to do, have you to do, he may not have me to do, go. 
There's some people go, oh, go with me. I'm going to the outskirts of Australia and we're going to minister and we're going to pray and we're going to preach. Come on, I need 10 people. And you're like, oh, yeah. But God's like, no, it's not for you to go. That's not what I called you to do. I called them to do that, but I'm calling you to do this. And that transformation process, we are also growing so we can hear God clearer. Not just as the body of Christ, but also for the vision that God has given you personally. For the growth that God has given you. For the path that God has you on and where he's taking you. See, we have a relationship as a married couple in Christ. We have a relationship together as a bride of Christ, but also we have a personal relationship with Christ. And there's things personally God wants us to do collectively. God wants us to do as a couple. And God wants you to do personally. There's a ministry as a church. There's a ministry as a couple. And there's a ministry as you. But God is expecting you to do. Gifts, talents that he has put within you to do. For where you are. For where I'm the job. For, for who you are. Uh, how you want you to minister, administration, prophecy, evangelism, teaching, pastoring, whatever it is. That's what he's calling you to do. You have to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. God has given you every resource to, to live a godly life. So we can't make the excuse of, well, Lord, no. Lord, where, where do I go? Lord, help me. Where, who do I speak to? Minister to me, speak to me, let me know, put these things in me, whether it's through a song, on TV, whatever, show me. So I can be pleasing to you. So I can bless you because people need Jesus. Amen. When we surrender and when we yield and when we submit and when we humble ourselves to God's authority, backing away from that pool of our flesh, oh Lord, I don't want to go there. Oh Lord, I don't want to do that. Oh Lord, no, I, I like that too much. I don't want to change. When we sit and knit, it's like when you want to lose weight. Ooh, I know, I, I, mm, but it tastes so good. I, I have two of them every day. What you mean I got to go to only have one a week? <sighs> the hurting in the flesh for things that are good and better for us are wrong. We have to submit that flesh. Okay, flesh, listen. This is better for you. This is good for you. These vitamins spiritually, these minerals spiritually are better for you to help you grow strong in the things of God. That junk food you've been feeding your spirit is not going to work. It's not going to satisfy. It's not going to fill you. Amen. Oh, yeah, I give that time with God. It's a quality time. Oh, yeah, I, I give a check. I, I give my 10% my, my they talk about the time. Okay, but when God tells you to give your time, what about that? Oh, well, I. What about what God has asked you to give? Have you done anything what God has put in your hands? Well, I keep meaning to, but submitting, obedience. God isn't going to beg you to do it. He might say, okay, you know what? I'm going to take it from you and I'm going to go give it to somebody else so they can be blessed. What are we doing? Are we abandoning the old you? The old lifestyle, the old way of thinking. Or we kind of holding on to it. Yeah, I've abandoned that, but I'm still holding on to this. I can't quite let go of that just yet. Why? Why is it that important? Why do you have a problem letting that, that go, that past go, that person go, that negativity go? Sometimes in relationships, we hold on to a person because, well, we're used to that. We think that's the best that we can get, the best that we can do. Sometimes we hold on to that car that we like, oh, that was my first car, and it's literally hanging on by a hubcap. We put in 10, 15 thousands of dollars when we could have did and paid off a whole brand new car. But we just can't let go of it. Oh, it was, it was my first. When God tried to give you a BMW. Are we abandoning that old attitude, those old way and those desires? Are we abandoning that disappointment and that aggravation and that sorrow? Are we abandoning that sinful nature? Oh, I'm telling you right now, she's coming at me again, I'm going to curse her out. Are we letting that stuff go? Hebrews 11.6 
Hebrews 11.6 says, praise God. Hebrews 11 verse 6 says, and it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. First of all, I can't even please God if I don't have confidence. Trust him. Have you heard of some relationships? Uh, they, they went through so much and, and you hear the woman or you hear the guy go, you know what? I don't even know if I can be in this relationship because I don't trust you. Parents, huh? Our child has done something so off the hook. It's like, what in the world was my child thinking? And they go, oh, mom and dad, you can trust me. I, you know what? I, I don't know if I can leave you in the house alone because the last two times I did, this happened. I don't know if I can trust you. What kind of relationship can we have with God if we don't trust him? What kind of relationship can we have with God if we don't have confidence in him? Yeah, I know you, God, but what do you mean, but? Yeah, I know you created and all you died for my sins. However, what do you mean, however? You need to introspect and ask yourself, why is it you cannot trust or have confidence in God in that area, but in this one? You can believe God for this, but not for that. And a lot of times the answer has nothing to do with God, it has everything to do with your experiences with man. It really does. Man who let you down, man who disappointed you. Relationships with man where you were felt so vulnerable, you just couldn't trust them. It had nothing to do with God. Oh, I was waiting on God for this and, and that person, this happened. Well, wait a minute. What does that have to do with you, their relationship with God? Their calling, their time. It may have disappointed you, but really, to be honest, I'm not trying to be funny. It really had nothing to do with you. It was all about their walk with God. We blame God for so much when really it has nothing to do with him. It has everything to do with man and our response and our reaction and what we held on to instead of letting go. God already said, cast your cares into me. I'll sustain you. But in order to do that, I have to trust God. I have to have confidence in God because that vulnerability in me, because I've had vulnerability with man and in relationships and people let me down and they lied and they abandoned and they betrayed and they gossip and they bullied and they talk behind my back. But God is not like man and he says that clearly. Baby, I hear you. I feel you. Jesus is like, ha ha, I got you. Guess what? They did it so much to me. They put me on the cross. Who was at the cross? The people I thought had my back. How many was there at the foot of the cross when I was on it? I got my back for you. So Jesus knows about hurt. Jesus knows about vulnerability. Jesus knows about pain and suffering and betrayal and abandonment. He can tell you firsthand. But that still didn't stop him from trusting God even on the cross. Because he was Jesus now. He could have got off the cross if he really wanted to. But he didn't. He had to trust God all the way to the grave. That, well, Father, you, you said this, so I'm going to trust you to the death. I'm going to believe you. I'm going to have confidence. And that's, that, that, had only, that, that could only be Jesus. Some people, oh, yeah, I would die. Yeah, you might die for somebody you love, but what about people who's spitting on you and hating on you? People that you know would never receive you, that will continue to hate you, wouldn't even acknowledge that you existed. Jesus died for them too. For all the people you're talking about, something, I can't believe him, he died for them too. Your haters, he died for them too. So it, it had to be Jesus. We need to let go of that vulnerability. We don't have to feel that way with God. 
He said, baby, I know you feel that way about your mom or your husband or your brother or your sister or somebody on the job or them three boyfriends or girlfriends, but you don't have to put up that wall with me. I'll carry you through. Let go. I know you can barely stand. I'll carry you over the victory line, over the finish line. Let me, allow me. I ain't going to wrestle you to the ground to do it, but here I am. Jesus was, uh, went, went with Peter when he got out of the boat and he was falling. He, oh, Jesus came over. He didn't hate on him. He just held his hand up, pulled Peter out. God will pull you out of your situation if you allow him to. Peter didn't go, oh, I know I'm drowning, but, <clears throat> you know, I'm feeling vulnerable. I don't want nobody to look at me like a, you know, no, <laughs> I, I'm drowning. Help. Sometimes we need to, in that vulnerability, to, to say, Jesus, help me. Help me, God. I don't know what to do. Help me, God. I don't want to be like this. Help me, God. I don't want to be over here. Help me, God. I made the wrong time. Help me, God. I, I relied on man. I relied on this. And I asked you last. I should have asked you first. Help me. And then get his help. Not just ask him for help and then don't receive his help. Pride ain't never paid nobody's bills. Pride ain't never healed nobody. Pride ain't never saved nobody. But Jesus did. When you let those walls down and you submit to him. Accepting Jesus means walking in a lifestyle that blesses God. Accepting Jesus means I believe. I'm trusting God. Not part of God, but all of God. And God, there's going to be some times where I'm going to waver. But I'm asking you, Lord, to help me. Because you know me. You said in Psalms 139 that you know my thoughts even from afar. You know who I am better than myself. So, Father, there, there's some times I don't even know I, I'm, I'm wavering and I'm falling and I'm slipping back. Send somebody I can receive from, from you to remind me, to hold me accountable, surround me, not with what I want to hear, but what I need to hear so I can make sure I stay growing, stay transforming, and stay in your grace, stay blessing you. Because where the world is going, <laughs> it's a lot of heat over there. And I don't mean hot like good. I mean hot like fire. And not a heavenly fire either. I don't want to go there. We have to remind ourselves, Father. I know I need to keep growing. And I know I need to keep moving forward. Because if I stay still for too long, I may get stuck. With the old me, I, what I've done, all this stuff that has happened, people coming to me, oh, did you do this and did you do that? Did you vote for that? How could you do this? Whatever. The old me for a minute, I was like, oh, almost something welled up in me. Then Jesus had to say, hold up, baby. Come on now. Who do you belong to? Speak that word. Speak it. Let Jesus be at the wheel. Come on, baby. I got you. You speak gospel. Because see, when they try and confront you and, they, and you're speaking the word, they're going to confront me. So I'm going to give you the word. So if you want to argue, you can argue with Jesus. I'm just going to stand up here and I'm going to pray for you. Instead of talking about you, I'm going to pray for you. Instead of lifting my hands up to hit you, I'm going to lift my hands up to heaven and ask God to help you. Instead of getting nasty with you, I'm going to, I'm going to speak in the word. I'm going to be, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to get the prayer warriors over here for you. Anything you see me might be throwing in your direction may be some anointing oil, but I'm not going to throw curses at you. I'm not going to throw my hands at you unless I'm like, Jesus. Because see, the old me would have been like, okay, you know what? You're playing games. I mean, hold my perk. But see, that's not me anymore. The old man may have been like, okay, hold up. She want to talk to me about something. Okay, look, do, do, do. Oh, what? She said, what? Okay, let me call my crew. Girl, that's the old me. Sometimes I got a, uh, like, hold on, wait a minute. Almost had a flashback. Then God pulled me up. That spirit of self-control. 
the Holy Spirit to go, girl, excuse me, who do you belong to that keeps me in check? I ain't gonna lie sometimes. I fall because I'm not perfect. But then I recognize my wrong and I'm like, okay, I was wrong. Praise Jesus. In my circle, I have people that hold me accountable to a godly standard and go, Nicole, you was wrong. You shouldn't have said that. You shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have went there. That's not how you should have responded. And I go, you know what? I need to apologize. You know what? I need to say this. You know what? This is what I need to do. They can accept it or not, but I want them to see the godly fruit. I want them to see my sincerity, whether they accept it or not. God is holding me accountable for what I do and don't do, say and don't say. Amen. The new me, <laughs> Jesus help me, the new me, Holy Spirit, please, please, if anything that is in me, when I go see this person, when I go to that place, help me, help me, ball up my fists in prayer instead of to hurt physically somebody. Help me, Holy Spirit, when they say something nasty to me instead of gossiping, instead of uh, being mad and nasty. Help me remember that scripture. Help me remember that prayer. Help me in the midst of it. Just bust out in prayer or in some praise song. Because they need prayer too. They need prayer. And it ain't always people in the world. Sometimes it's your brother and sister in Christ. Oh, I can't believe brother so-and-so said. I can't believe. Okay, you know what? I pray. I God say flee from sin. I'm, 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 I'm going to walk away right now. Holy Spirit, help me. Let me desire to be real and to be honest with myself for you, not fake and phony, because that's not going to get me nowhere. That fake and phoniness is not a heart condition change. Fake flowers look pretty, but you know what? They fake. I can water fake flowers and they will still look the same. Because they're fake. The new me chooses to be compassionate. Recognizing. But you know what? They may be going through something too. Because God you reminded me. That hurt people. Hurt people. People sometimes who are nasty. Something's going on. So I desire to glorify you, God, and I'm going to pray for them. Maybe in the midst of it, I go, you know what? I know you just cursed me out, but is everything okay? Do you want me to pray for you right now? They may stick, they may curse me out more. You know what? I'm just going to start praying for you. God, are you? Okay, I'm, I'm going to pray for them. They may walk away. They may still be cursing, but they're going to remember I'm prayed for them. And whether they receive it now, maybe it's seeds that somebody else will water. Maybe it's watering seeds that somebody else planted. But God, I'm believing you're going to bring forth the increase because you said the fervor and the effectual prayers of the righteous availeth much. In Christ, through this rebirth, that reborn, that, 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 the reform, that transformation, my spirit is rejuvenated. It's revitalized. It's made anew. It's refreshed. It's like, whoo, it's almost like somebody who had a stressful year and they go on a vacation for two weeks. It's like, oh my gosh, I, and I've gone to the Bahamas and I spread my feet out and whoo, it's just like, oh my gosh, I don't hear the city noise. It's just, the air don't even smell the same. It's amazing. That's what God can do for your spirit. That's what God could do for your life, for your marriage, for whatever. God can make you feel that way in the midst of everything going wrong. He can make you feel right. God has given me a new strength, a new vitality, a new life, a new energy, a sparkle, that drive, that vigor. God's helped me keep it fresh. God says in Isaiah 40, 31, lastly, he said, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength, soaring on the wings like eagles. God speaks that we will run and not grow weary. We will not faint. We will not be tired and fatigued and overwhelmed and exasperated and burnt out and frustrated. We won't be weakened and unsteady or tremble. But we will be on our sure foundation. Unstoppable. Unchangeable. Walking in God's unlimited power. Speaking 
from God's unlimited wisdom, continually drawing from his unlimited resources. That's how mighty God is. When we say almighty, that means full of might. When we say all powerful, that means full of power. Let God infill you as where well as fulfill you. God desires to do so much in your life if you desire that complete spiritual change. And again, this isn't just a message for those that are just coming to Christ, but those that are still in Christ. Maybe you've been standing still and you're like, you, I feel like, I don't know, uh, I've been, I, I need to do something. I feel like God has called me to do that. I just don't know how. I feel God wants me to go here or do that, but I don't, I, I, I don't understand the specifics. I, I, I need some type of revelation. I feel God could be pulling me here, but I'm unsure. God, I, I need that word from you. I feel burnt out, stressed out. Father, help me have that, that, that newness. As you speak in your word in Psalms 18, let me have that, 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 that so much strength that I feel like my arms can pull a, a bow of bronze, Father, that I can leap over a wall. Let me have that rejuvenation. Ain't got nothing to do with somebody's age. Let me have that spiritual youthfulness. Let me have that fire for you, that passion for you that I used to have. Let me not look at the world and get so overwhelmed and so burnt out and so disgusted and oh because this and people are doing that yeah they're doing that because they don't know Jesus but you do you can set the tone you can set the tone for the atmosphere that is around you have you ever been somewhere and somebody's in there and they're all full of joy and you're like oh hey girl and it just it, it catches like a virus it, it catches on to you and you get excited but then you can go into a room and somebody's so down and they're so negative and it just is draining. Set the tone for where you are for that change. People can hop on or they can walk away. Let God invigorate you. Let the joy of the Lord literally be your strength. Ask God, help me, show me. What am I supposed to do? What can I do? What change can I do? What can I make different in my life with you? Is it I need to get up in the morning 15 minutes before I go to work or before I deal with the kids or whatever? I mean, I can get up 15 minutes early to do this and that. Maybe I can spend 15 minutes of prayer with you. Show me a scripture. Maybe I'll read a scripture, Psalms 91 or whatever, that'll help me start the day. I know with me, I can't speak with someone else. Sometimes when I start the day with God, and things can work a little bit different. That doesn't mean that things don't happen unexpectedly, but sometimes how I deal with those unexpected things because I started my day out with God, I can handle them a little better. It's like my spiritual coffee that I have. Do I end my day with God? Lord, thank you, because that accident that happened, I could have did that. That person I did, that could have done I slipped here, but you helped me with that. Thank you, Lord. How you start and how you finish. Do you talk to God throughout the day? I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. Lord, I'm gonna, I just need to talk to you for a second because my boss is this or this happened. He can be with you wherever you are. You don't need anybody to go to God for you. That's what your personal relationship with God is. Don't nobody need, I don't have to go to a pastor. I don't have to go to a priest. I don't have to hold a book or some beads. Whatever. I can go to God. I, me and God. The thief on the cross didn't need some beads. He didn't need a book. He didn't. It was just him and Jesus. Sometimes Jesus just has to be enough in the bathroom and at the Walmart and in your closet or in your kitchen or wherever you are. Talk to him like you would talk to your girlfriend or your, your bro on the phone. Be honest with him. Be honest with yourself. God desires like the song that I was talking about in the beginning, Together. The inner talks about together, we're dangerous, and we are. That's why the enemy tries to oppress you. That's why the enemy tries to distract you. Again, like I said this whole time, we in the body of Christ were so focused on this election and the results, but don't let anything, 
I don't care what it is, take the focus off Jesus and your personal relationship with Jesus, no matter what is happening in the world. You can affect the world, believe it or not. You don't have to let the world affect you. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for your love and your light. And we thank you for your revelation. Father, we thank you for sanctification. Father, that's another sermon. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father, for your patience. Father, you're so very patient with us. Father, you don't have to be. You could have been like, I told this child 15 times. But Father, maybe it took the 16th time or the 20th. But Father, I thank you for being patient. Father, let us never take that patience for granted. Never let us take your sacrifice for granted. Father, let us never take you for granted. Father, forgive us of our sins, our shortcoming, our missing it. Father, we're talking about generational sins that followed us all the way back to the beginning. Adam and Eve in the garden, Father. Father, forgive us. Forgive us, Father God, of that sin mentality, that sin nature of allowing our sin or things to master us instead of, Father, walking in your fruit and mastering them. Forgive us, Lord God, for seeking you last instead of seeking you first. Father, we love you. And Father, sometimes we got to be real and honest where sometimes we don't trust you like we should, but we want to. Help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, Father, to be more vulnerable. Help us to stop comparing you with men and, and relationships and things and feelings that have happened in our past with other people because you are not like man. Father, we desire to bless you to love you the way you deserve to be loved, but help us. Father, we forgive those who have hurt us, attacked us, whatever it may be, Father, we don't want to hold on to it. We forgive what they've done to us personally, to our family. Father, we just let it go. We pray for them, salvation, the hurting, the whatever happened to them, Father, we give it to you. Father, we thank you. Father, we pray for those even in the midst of this pandemic that's still going on that are hurting. The people, Father, that are losing lives, Father. Father, this flu season, influenza, people who are dying, Father God, whether it's cancer. Father, we bring them before you, that, that physical pain, Father God, that sickness, Father. Reach out to them and heal them. Speak to them, minister to them, love on them, help get them through. Help the families, Father. Give them your divine peace in the midst of whatever your will is for them them for your for their lives father we thank you father for helping us blessing this ministry and father we pray that this word blesses somebody out there that they can go and bless someone else and they bless someone else father we give you glory honor and praise and we say thank you you are awesome and we love you in jesus name amen amen